Welcome to Dear Sandy. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today I have a wonderful guest with me, uh, the town supervisor of the town of Cortland, Linda Puglisi. Welcome, Linda. Thank you so much, Sandy, for inviting me. It's a pleasure. We've done many shows together over the right. years, and I'm really looking excited. I'm very excited about talking to you today. Right. Well, we work together on so many issues, yeah. and we'll try to get into a lot of it. It yeah. just seems like maybe, maybe community communities along the Hudson River have more issues than other places, I don't oh, no, know, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there are a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, I know in the in the past, um, actually the past several weeks, I've really been at Town Cortland, uh, Town of Cortland, either at the Town Hall or at the Muriel Morbido Center um, for a lot of your, your services for veterans. And um, I know you're a town that really cares so much about veterans and do, yeah. um, you know you have actually the VA hospital yep. in the town of Cortland mm -hmm. um, and I know you have uh, these the wonderful exhibits at, at Town Hall mm -hmm. um, which are wonderful. So tell us, I mean I, I was at your Memorial Day event and then you, you had another um, a Naming for Vietnam, a mo new memorial yep. and you've had Purple Heart Memorial. Tell us all about your veteran well, issues. It's extremely important to me. Um, I always tell the story. Uh, my father was a Marine in World War II. He's no longer with us. But he always instilled in myself and my sisters, if we ever had an opportunity to give back to the men and women who have mm -hmm. defended our country, our veterans, try your best. Mm -hmm. So I always think about those wise words of my father's. And so uh, in Cortland, we started uh, many years ago a veterans committee. If you remember Mike mm -hmm. Mongero, he yes. also was a World War II mm -hmm. veteran. He's passed away as well. Right. There's actually a little park yeah. named for him. It still uh, is on, on Route, Route 6. Route 6, Route mm -hmm. six right. So we started it, and it's evolved into a regional uh, veterans committee for the Hudson Valley. And uh, we meet at least m once a month at the Cortland Town Hall, and we hold many, many ceremonies. Uh, and we've built many memorials over the years in our community, which I'm really proud of. And most importantly, uh, we have lobbied and worked really hard to keep services for our veterans at the VA, which mm -hmm. is in the hamlet of Montrose in the town of Cortland. Right. We were very concerned many years ago that that was going to be reduced, mitigated uh, the services, and so we used to have um, uh, rallies, rallies, and rallies in the and front rallies. yard. <laughs> Sandy, you've always been there with us from day one. You've right. always been there with us to keep the services, increase the services mm -hmm. for the men and women, mm -hmm. PTSD, mm -hmm. TBI services for the veterans are really important. And uh, so far, um, they have kept the doors open. They didn't close it. We were really, really afraid about that many years ago. So we, we lobby for veteran services. Um, at all different levels, federal, state, local, county, and so on. And we've uh, worked really hard together. Our chairperson, you know him, Willie Nazario, mm -hmm. he's a Vietnam Purple Heart veteran himself. And he and all of our other veterans in the committee work really hard for those services. We're going to continue the efforts. And the memorials are just really lovely. I'm really proud of them. At the front, uh, lawn of the Cortland Town Hall campus, we have a Purple Heart Memorial. We were the first town to have one in Westchester mm -hmm. County. And, and I think that was, what, about three years ago? I can't remember, two uh, or three years ago. About two years, years ago. ago, and we were named the first Purple Heart town in Westchester County by the mm -hmm. Her Purple Heart um, organization. Very proud of that um, as well. And then uh, this just about a month ago, Sandy, you were there, thank mm -hmm. you we dedicated our Vietnam era memorial. And it's the 50th uh, anniversary of Vietnam War, which was a very, very difficult war, and they all are, of course, mm -hmm. and a period in our, our lives. You know, I lived through it, uh, you know, you did. Yeah, I, did right. I lost a couple friends in Vietnam War, and so on. 
So I thought it would be really nice for us to uh, construct a um, Vietnam memorial. We had the dedication. It was so lovely. We had Vietnam veterans speak. So mm -hmm. emotional. brings tears you to had, your eyes. You, you talked about all the different people from Cortland, those that have passed away, but those that were living yeah. still that had uh, served have, in Vietnam. We have about 85 names uh, inscribed on our uh, plaque. Uh, we've gotten the names of a few others afterwards, and we're going to put them on another plaque. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, it's a continual uh, effort. And uh, that's a lot from our community. Right. You know, some of them are still living, some right. are not. And that's so important with the Vietnam veterans because we've always had a problem for Vietnam veterans recognizing themselves, yeah. um, going out to get services, and by all of the um, highlight on them uh, by Cortland and yeah. hopefully other communities, yeah. it will just bring everyone out to it's so uh, important. be a part and of then, the community. You know, teaching our children, you know, I go into the schools and I talk about it, our veterans do, I know you do mm -hmm. too. It's so important, you know, my, my grandsons, I talk mm -hmm. about it to them, and they're always very interested in it. Uh, but we need to uh, remind our community all the time. It's not just at the Memorial Day ceremony that we say thank you. It should be every day. Right, you right. Know, every single day. So, so that's um, a, a big part of the things, one mm -hmm. of the things that we work on in the town hall. There are many others, mm -hmm. but uh, you spoke it comes about, from the heart. You spoke about your family for a second. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I believe this, it's, is it called the Cortland Magazine? Is there Cortland a new Living magazine? magazine. It started okay. about a year ago, and uh, Sonia uh, Garber is the editor, publisher of the magazine. Uh, human interest stories, uh, local businesses, events that are occurring in the, mm -hmm. not just Cortland, but in Peekskill and Yorktown, Putt Valley. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's really, really cute and uh, features some, you know, regular families right. in the community. Did they have your picture in there with they your did. family? Sonia asked, uh -huh. asked uh, me and my family if we would like to uh, be on the first cover the first uh, month. So I went to my grandsons and they went, yay! Yes, of course, <laughs> of course, Grandma. So they were so excited. Um, they live in Westchester County, and so they took it into school to show oh, their- How their, old are your grandkids? Uh, 12 and nine. Right. Right, Oliver and Jeremy. Uh -huh. so, uh, so they're, they're very proud. Yeah, they're really terrific. Right, and, and you have, have twins. You have a- I have twins, a boy and a girl, uh, my daughter, Allie, and my son, Jeff. Allie's a lawyer in New York City. Jeffrey is a doctor over in Connecticut, so I'm very proud of them. They were raised in the town of Cortland mm -hmm, in this wonderful mm -hmm. community and school districts. So, um, they and they were actually raised with a mom that was involved in, in government yeah. for a long time. Uh -huh. So um, I, I, I went into, uh, I ran for office town council when they were still in high school, but before mm -hmm. that, Homeowner president, homeowner association president, mm -hmm. you know, school committees. Sandy, I know you did, did similar, similar things. things. Girl Scout leader. Right. I have children that come into the town hall, and we show them around the town hall, and they always ask me the question, "How did you start? You know, mm -hmm. why did you?" I said, "I raised my hand to be a Girl Scout leader, and then one thing led, led to the <laughs> next." <laughs> right. It's you a didn't, true start. You didn't start out with that as I as know. in uh, no, that wasn't uh, your you ambition. Know, <laughs> right, but one thing as in life, one thing leads to the next, and I'm just honored to be town supervisor. Right. It's 26 years now. Right. You have just done a marvelous job, but I always use you as an example when I'm talking about um, a community that's been able to provide excellent services, keep the taxes low, do uh, merging, consolidation, mm -hmm. um, really picking up on all the things that I think we'd love everybody to be able to do um, to still provide services but just do it in a different way and and you've certainly met the challenge Thank i think you. you haven't had a you had such a little tax increase over dozens yeah, of um, years we have an excellent team of course town board members uh, controller and staff and uh, all our department heads work really hard and um our you know signature effort is to keep our town taxes as low as possible so that families have more money to for their for their children mm -hmm. a foundation mm -hmm. um, and so you can do that in many ways you can share services i know you remember dr sal preziosi yes, from many years right. ago the westchester Probably 2000 in the 1980s or something yeah, like that yeah but he had uh, uh, you know this westchester 2000 report uh, it was a uh, 
younger supervisor and going to seminars, meeting Dr. Preziosi, and he would tell me about sharing services. Mm -hmm. So right away we started thinking about that, uh, sharing services uh, with the county police and the state police. And when we had a mandate, you know, unfunded mandate from the EPA to filter the water, we got together with the town of Yorktown, mm -hmm. the town of Somers, the Montrose Improvement District, and we built the filtration plant that's on Route 6. Mm -hmm. So instead of the town of Cortland spending $20 million. And the town of Yorktown yeah, and everybody else, We did it collectively, right. so the town, um, uh, our proportion share was $8 million. So those are things mm -hmm. that we're continuing to do. Recycling was another one. We all got together as a coalition in Northern Westchester, so we didn't have to do it to, uh, individually. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, you know... Um, you also had the public works and uh, highway yeah. and, and right. so on. That was, that was a, I just remember that very difficult campaign because what happens in the in the laws of New York or when we've established we had elected uh, a lot of elected receiver of taxes town clerks highway superintendents we, we had a lot of elected people and when you want to coordinate in a different way um, it doesn't work with one change. individual. It's a, it's a change, and it's so hard. And I remember how hard you worked uh, to campaign to to try to put together this whole this whole public works uh, consortium. The, the goal was to have uh, just one government, not to have you know twenty five percent of it in the the highway fund. Mm -hmm. and with the elected highway superintendent. Nothing against the gentleman that held that mm -hmm. position, uh, Skeet Kelly, he was a wonderful, wonderful man. It was just to be more efficient, to be able to share the vehicles and the men and women employees with the other departments. Mm -hmm. And it made it easier, more cost effective to do that if that position was appointed. We put it up for a referendum vote Mm -hmm. I remember campaigning for it, actually. Oh, you did campaign, <laughs> right, I remember <laughs> to that. To prove to the community <laughs> that this would be the best uh, thing to do for the future. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. has. I mean, Sandy, we've saved 500000 to a $1 million mm -hmm. a year by, uh, by doing that referendum, and that was back in the late 1990s. But what's so interesting is that there are very few other communities that I know of that have picked up on that That's issue. That's right, right. It's, it's, it's difficult. You have, to, you have to have a spreadsheet nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to market it and you have to explain why you're doing it. You know, it's in the best interest of the community. You're going to save taxpayers dollars mm -hmm. and still continue to provide the excellent services. The people, um, uh, they believe what we were saying. They voted for it three to one overwhelmingly. Mm -hmm and it's worked out really well all these many years, so it's uh, more efficient to have it that right. way, to be honest with you. And then um, we had a new police plan in the town. We had a very, very small police department, only 10 officers, a couple of them were out on disability. And so we just felt that it would be better to uh, share the, the police services to get more police officers to be more efficient with the Westchester County Police so we entered mm -hmm. into an agreement with them. They have a northern uh, satellite at the Cortland Town Hall. Mm -hmm. And then the state police were here, Troop K were right, here they forever. were here already, right. And then we built them um, a new office area down by the Cortland train station. Mm -hmm. They pay mm -hmm. for the bond. Mm -hmm. And so we have saved millions and millions of dollars by right. this new police plan and we have many officers to help us with the challenges right. that we have. And you, and you did that a long time ago, Nine, and more nineties. recently, Osning um, yeah. looked at your model. Um, Mount Kisco, I think, um, has looked at that, looked yeah. at that, Putnam Valley, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so on. For so. us, it's worked out beautifully. It really was in the best interest of our community. It's not for every community. I don't go mm -hmm. around, you know, uh, telling people that you have to do this, this is the way to do it. This was what's best for Cortland, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm, been a, a mm -hmm. wonderful plan, and I can't tell you enough about uh, the wonderful interaction of the two departments, and when I call upon them, when, you know, they're there for us, and so it's worked right. out really well, Sandy, you know. And we're I very proud of our uh, town tax record for the 26 years. It's been about 1% for the entire 26 years. I don't think anybody can claim that. I don't think yeah. any community that I know of and, can claim that. And so. even more importantly, we've been able to 
put more money into fund balance. So we've tripled our mm -hmm. savings accounts. It's called mm -hmm. uh, reserve accounts or fund balance. So we have about $17 million now. I started out, it was like $5 million. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we use that money for various projects. But we want to keep money aside for emergencies, too. Right. That's very important. Right, right, because you never know. Um, but I did notice that I think a lot of your road structure that you've done mm -hmm. in the last number of years hasn't been on borrowed money. Um, well, we pay as you go is the expression. We don't right. borrow. For, we do about $2 million of paving, resurfacing every single year. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, former longtime controller, you knew him, Glenn, uh, Glenn Sestero, he retired, mm -hmm. and now Patty Roke and I pay, and the town board, of course, pay as you go, don't borrow, uh, don't use a credit card, don't borrow mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. paving and purchasing of vehicles. We never have borrowed money mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. And we probably average five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars a year in, in upgrading our fleet and vehicles, and then about two million a year in um, resurfacing our seventy miles of roads in our town. It's a big mm -hmm. town. It is a big town. It's Forty big square town. miles. Right. Yeah. So it's um, so. How, how, what percentage of those do you think are town roads uh, versus? You also have a lot of state roads. I we know have, going we, in and out. We have some major state corridors, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. you know: Route Six, Two Hundred Two, Two. Bear Mountain, Parkway Nine, Nine, Nine A. Nine. So uh, those are the major state corridors, mm -hmm. and um, we were able to get the state DOT to allow us to call our portion of Route Six Cortland Boulevard for obvious right. reasons. Cortland identity. Right. So that right. took a while. You helped. You right, know, you, right. You're always there helping us, Sandy. So um, the finances and then, you know, I always say, I'm going to just bring this out if you don't mind. This is a pie chart that our receiver of taxes did for us, uh, Mary Brining. And just maybe if we, if we hold yeah, this up. Hold it up. Um, yeah. Now, can you? Uh, the um, yellow portion right here is the town tax. It's about 12% of your overall uh, tax bill. Mm -hmm. The red portion is your school tax. Almost 70% is your school tax. Then you have the county tax and special districts like a sidewalk or a paramedic uh, district or a sewer district, etc. Uh, and then we your town tax is about equivalent to the, the county tax. Yeah, they're fourteen percent. We're twelve percent, mm -hmm. right. and that was uh, you know a higher number mm -hmm. when I first started, and mm -hmm. because we've mm -hmm. been able to be very cost effective. One of the other things that I'm proud of is we have very low debt. Mm -hmm. Moody's, as you know, is the one that tells you what your bond rating is. We have an excellent bond rating, and how much you can borrow as a community. Well, we could borrow three hundred and eighty-five million dollars. Don't worry, we never will. Our debt is six million dollars. So we're only about 1% of what we could actually borrow. Right. So we've been doing this uh, philosophy, this practice actually, of pay as you go as best you can. You know, when, mm -hmm, you're, when mm -hmm. you're building a new water storage tank, which we've done in the last couple of years, you have to borrow. Right. Because it's two, three million dollars. So, and then we're retiring a lot of debt next year, you know, which is really good. Mm-hmm. You know? So you also have a wonderful new project coming up um, on Route 6 mm -hmm. <coughs> with an extension of the town center, Cortland Town Center. Yeah, the economics of the, you know, we balance, you know, the open space, the um, green area of the community along with the economics of the town. That's very important for every community to balance the both, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So we have the Cortland Town Center that was um, enlarged uh, about 15 years ago. And the same owners bought the property across the street next to the Van Cortlandville Elementary School, Sandy. Mm -hmm. And so it's much smaller. It's only about 20% the same of the size of the Cortland Town Center, 145,000 square feet. So it's a lot smaller. The, the larger one is 900,000 right. square feet. And what are they going to have in their smaller Oh, uh, They're going to have some smaller stores. Um, they haven't given me all the names yet. If they had, mm -hmm. I would tell you right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then they're going to have a new restaurant, and uh, the ShopRite grocery store is moving down the road from the location they're at now because oh. they wanted a super ShopRite, you know, one of these oh, big okay. mega stores. 
And it's my looks pretty big right now, but I guess it yeah, has to be bigger. Yeah, it was my understanding <laughs> they were looking to go elsewhere, and so mm -hmm. they opted for this location. So we're trying mm -hmm. to find, and we're working with the owner of the ShopRite building to see what can go in there. I'm hoping for an indoor ice skating rink, something really exciting like that for the family. So mm -hmm. we don't want mm -hmm. it to be vacant, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. So that, of course, the new uh, economics of the new uh, smaller shopping mall brings in more revenue and more jobs for the area. And they, they put in some more amenities like new right. sidewalks and street, li street lamps and things like right. that. And you do have to do the balance. I mean, the public yeah. sometimes gets upset with one thing or another, yeah. uh, but there are some communities that are just all residential, and then you have no way to buffer you have uh, to the do, tax you have burden. To balance. Right. And then industry also. And of course, you know, I don't know if you want to talk about Indian Point. Sure, now. absolutely. Okay. Uh, Indian Point is, uh, has been our largest taxpayer for the town of Cortland government um, and for the Hendrick Hudson School District and for the village of Buchanan. Mm -hmm for all these many years, right. 45, 50 years, right? And what is the uh, the taxes that you get from them? Are In total, all right. the entities Every year. are $32 million a year. Mm -hmm. And that's right. divided up with the town, the village of Buchanan, the Hen Hut School District, the library. Westchester County government, right. Hen, um, the Hendrick Custom Free Library, right. and one of our fire, fire departments, departments for Plank. Right. In total, $32 million a year. The town of Cortland gets about 900000 a year. That's about 2% of our budget. Mm -hmm. Hendrick Hudson School District, one-third of their annual right. budget, $24 million, comes from right. Entergy. And Buchanan is, is like 46%, yeah. so that's about half of their uh, budget comes from Indian Point, the two nuclear plants. And as everybody knows by now, um, Entergy decided that they were going to close the doors. Governor Cuomo agreed with that. And so that was announced on January 9th of 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't know about it until that right. moment. I right. have it was to. A surprise. I, have to say I remember that, you. You, know. you called me and said, "Did you know about it, Sandy?" Yeah. And I said, "No, oh, I didn't no, know about it no, either." No, so. you would have let me know. <laughs> I know that. So they were negotiating, and you know. Anyway, so we have to go forward, and we right. have to address the challenges, and we are. Um, so the financial tax revenue is is huge. The jobs, Sandy, as you know, because you work with the mm -hmm. workers over a and thousand the unions, people over a thousand. at the plant, but all of the other jobs that all the contractors created. that work there, union members, and the local businesses. Mm -hmm. One of the delis that's near the plant, one third of their revenue comes from the workers. Right. You don't even think about that yeah. until you have this uh, challenge now. Right. And then, of course, the uh, radioactive spent fuel rods is an issue. They're going to be stored there, I don't know how mm -hmm. long, into perpetuity. Mm -hmm. They'll be in dried cast storage units. Uh, they won't go to Yucca Mountain in my lifetime, that's for sure. And then the environmental issues of the land, 240 acres, by the way. And the reuse of the property is so important to us in our community. Myself and others, along with the superintendent and the mayor, we started a local task force. We went to mm -hmm. work right mm -hmm. away. Right. 20 people on that local task force addressing all these issues that I'm talking about, having speakers come in to answer our questions. We even had... You had somebody that came from the Vermont plant. Vermont Yankee right. plant, uh, also owned by Entergy. They closed mm -hmm. those doors in 2014. So we had the citizen group come down, and we asked them questions about how they're getting through it. Very informative. They mm -hmm. were so terrific to come down. Entergy has spoken to us. They came in. Uh, many elected officials, yourself included, has been kind enough to come over and have lent your support to us. Um, and then um, I had asked uh, many years ago, but that once again is behind us, Sandy, uh, of the governor to start a what's called a Blue Ribbon mm -hmm, Commission mm -hmm. Task Force whatever you call it. Because we all knew at some point they eventually, were going to close. Eventually, eventually yeah, it was going to close. They're gonna close. That didn't occur, and it's behind, it's behind mm -hmm. me, it's behind mm -hmm. us. But now there is a state task force. I'm very delighted to say that they've asked me to sit on that task force and be a member of it. You are as mm -hmm. well. And uh, we're working with the Public Service Department, who will be chairing the endeavor. Uh, Mr. Tom Congdon has been terrific to work with. So they came down, they held their first meeting in the in Cortland, which was terrific, so citizens And they'll be come. back again in September in, in September, Cortland, right? And they're going to pay for, the state will be paying for a consultant 
um, to help us address these challenges and these many issues, the jobs, the economics, the environmental, mm -hmm. and so on. And so I'm, they've asked me to be on the selection committee for the consultants, so mm -hmm, I'll mm -hmm. probably see you in Albany in July. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, we're going forward. We have challenges. Uh, we're not taking it lightly. We're working uh, together with uh, yourself and your colleagues and locally realtors, business people, Deb Malone from the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. She's on the, the task force, uh, the librarian, the head librarian or the director of the library, Jill Davis, et cetera. So there's uh, many people on the local task force. It's a great group of people and we are collectively working together to address these issues. Right. And there's so many of them. I mean, it's, it's where's the energy coming from? And that, yes. that probably is more going to be a state issue. Correct. And they keep telling us that uh, there are going to be enough, enough times uh, transmission lines coming through or new plants opening. Um, so I don't think that's our issue. But we certainly have the employees and what's yes. going to happen with them yeah. and certainly the tax base um, and all the answer things. Are, are there people now starting to look at uh, properties in Cortland yeah. that might be might be used and marketed um, for economic development pur That's an purposes to yeah. you know to get more revenues into the community. That's a very community. good question. Um, so I had uh, asked our planner, our principal mm -hmm. planner in the town government, uh, Chris Keel. His name is. So he and staff have put together a list of all of the current commercial industrial properties in that mm -hmm. section of mm -hmm. town, mm -hmm. but really throughout the whole town. Right. To that we could potentially um, market for new in industries, commercial establishments in our community. So mm -hmm. we already have that mm -hmm. foundation done. Mm -hmm. This task force was a subcommittee who's going to be working with Chris on that over the summer. We've got homework mm -hmm. to do over the summer. And so that's an excellent question. So. We are looking at that right. as well. It's a little hard to look at the property that Entergy owns because they own the property right yeah. now. Um, but I guess that will come as as we go forward when, um, you know, because the there may be some parcels that might be able to be used, That's although right, so, yeah. they yeah. seem to it's hesitate. It's 40 acres. So it's a, a, a very big uh, site. It abuts the Hudson River, of course. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're looking at the survey topo of the of the plot of the uh, of the property to see if there's a section of it that can be reused immediately. Right. And we don't have to wait for the decommissioning. Right. I went to an NRC public hearing um, uh, a week ago mm -hmm. and I asked the question, how long will it take for Entergy or the company that they turn it over to to decommission it? Up to 60 years. Right. I won't be here to right. see that. But we have to push for sooner. But we have to push. <laughs> and I know you're really going to help us sooner. to get that to be a right. lower number. I was right. reading online in Europe, it's 10 to 12 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to decommission a nuclear plant. So we have to get that number down for reuse purposes, for tax rateables, and then to move the radioactive rods, they're called, into these dry cast storage units for safety right. purposes. It takes 10 years. It takes a long time. We probably have to do another another program on just Indian Point, Linda, but I want to sure. thank you so much well, for being you. here, and uh, you've just done such a great job for the town. Thanks town for of being Cortland. such a great partner to the town of Cortland, Sandy. Well, it's everybody working together. I want to thank all of you for watching, and if you have any questions at all, uh, don't hesitate calling me at 914-941-1111, or if you want to talk with the supervisor of the town of Cortland, Linda Puglisi, um, I think we've had a number up, but mm -hmm. uh, call Cortland Town Hall. Thank you so much. Drop in. Or just drop in. <laughs> Thanks very much. Have a good evening.